While pregnancy is a special time for women, it is also a vulnerable period during which women undergo a series of hormonal, physiological, and emotional changes. Mothers have a lifetime of love and joy shared with their babies to look forward to, but the postpartum period ahead can also be challenging, starting with labor. Labor and delivery can be painful, and often, this pain continues into the postpartum period. In a study of 229 women, Coughlin and colleagues found that during the first week postpartum, few women were without physical pain. Another study reported that the severity of acute postpartum pain was independently related to the risk of persistent postpartum pain and depression. Others have shown that specific qualities of the postpartum period constitute risk factors for postpartum depression, or PPD, such that women are particularly vulnerable during this time. Consequently, mothers experiencing postpartum pain and depression may have a difficult time following pregnancy, and their children may feel the effects, as maternal self-care and caregiving could be altered in light of postpartum pain and depression. Pain during this time can cause difficulty with walking, mood, sleep, relations with others, and ability to concentrate. Furthermore, caregiving activities including feeding practices, sleeping routines, well-child visits, vaccinations, and safety practices have been shown to be affected by PPD. These gaps in caretaking are not without their consequences. One study finds that maternal depressive symptoms at five months were predictive of infant health concerns at nine months. Depression in the postpartum period is also accompanied by difficulties in mother-infant bonding. When exploring their experiences, mothers with PPD have described feeling robotic or mechanical and zombie-like when interacting with their babies, and at times have felt the need to either literally or figuratively place a wall between them and their infant. Interaction disturbances studied have included less sensitivity by mothers, intrusive, controlling, and overstimulating parenting, or withdrawn, passive, and understimulating parenting. Consequently, PPD is negatively associated with child outcomes. Children with mothers suffering from PPD are at risk for emotional, behavioral, and psychological problems in tandem with cognitive and language development delays. So, how does postpartum pain affect these caregiving behaviors? And what are the effects on infant care and development? Though postpartum pain and postpartum depression have been explored by researchers independently, there is limited knowledge regarding the unique conditions faced by women who experience both postpartum pain and depression. While the literature shows that PPD may affect child outcomes as manifested through parenting changes, it is unclear what role postpartum pain could play in this process. As Latacini Somo hypothesizes in a recent publication, the maternal experience of pain may increase the risk of compromised mother-infant interactions that are observed in depression, negatively affecting infant care and development. I've had the privilege to work with Dr. Latacini Somo on the Depression and Postpartum Pain, or DAP, study. Our current project hopes to address gaps in the literature by testing the association between subjective and objective pain responses in women with and without PPD using fMRI. This knowledge will bring us closer to understanding how postpartum depression and pain are experienced by mothers. Our hope is that this project will provide knowledge that informs interventions and is helpful to new mothers, ultimately improving maternal and child outcomes.